What's going on guys? We're back out in the shop today. We got a, another project we're gonna be working on for the next couple days. We're out here a little sooner than usual because here in Utah, we got the first snowstorm of the winter, so first big storm of the winter. Anyway, so what we got today, we got three more reamers to work on here. We got three different sizes. One, two, three. You can see this one has one, two, three, four, five sets of flights on it. The customer wants all of these scarfed off. They're all shot. There's, I don't think there's a tooth left on this sucker. So we're gonna scarf all these off. And then he's got this set that's this size this set down here and this set here and they will be one two three equally spaced on the shaft looks like we do have a little bit of uh, wear on the shank here so we're gonna probably gonna build that up a little bit probably gonna set up some pipe stands open up the doors I really don't like scarfing that stuff off in the shop if I can help it but where it's pounding snow and I'm still in the process of getting an outlet put next to the door. So I'm probably just going to have to uh, scarf them off inside the shop. Just going to try to pay attention to where I'm throwing sparks and everything. But I'll get them set up on some pipe stands. We'll see if we can't get this first reamer set up and start scarfing them off. Alright, so we got our reamer all set up here. We got our plasma set up, air's hooked up, everything's ready to go. So we're just going to use the plasma, scarf every one of these flights off, and see if we can't get this cleaned up tonight to the point where we can start tacking the new flights on and possibly weld it out. We've got more time tonight than usual, so see what we can't get done. Okay, give you guys an update here. You can see I've got one, two, three flights done. And I'm just working on this fourth one. So hopefully you can see the line there, but there's a line that I've hit right here. And I'm just gradually peeling that out as I, as I see the line. I'll just take a little bit more as I as I go around. You can see there's I can't see the line here, but if you come back hot, but if you come back there's the line right there. So I'll just keep working my way around and that's I mean that's a pretty big weld. It's probably it's probably that big around by the time 
you get done. I'm pretty sure these were beveled when they welded them on. Then you can see they're at least triple passed. So there's quite a bit of weld holding these on. So you, it's nice to be able to have the plasma to be able to blow a whole bunch of weld out of there all at once. So anyway, we'll keep at it. Okay, quick update. Everything scarfed off. See that one got a little deep. It's okay, we'll fill it back up with weld. It's ideal if you can just peel it off right at the base material. These uh, these ones here were tough though. Whoever welded this on did a good job. There was a, a lot of weld there penetrated pretty deep so now we're gonna grab a grinder see if we can't clean it up Alright guys, give you guys an update real quick. So this is all cleaned up. Pretty happy with how that turned out. If you look at this, there's a couple spots here that have some, some gouges in them. Like there, and here. There's one here and here. So it was, uh, that was a pretty tough gouge job to be honest. Probably one of the tougher ones I've had where those flights were on an angle like this. This top side, because it was so tight, it was tough to peel the weld out without gouging the base material a little bit. I mean, it's, it's not terrible, but I am gonna get this over on the table 
And I got something something new to show you guys. Well, new to me. But it's going to be it's going to be a lifesaver for me. So I'm going to get this over to the table, get my XMT set up, and I'm going to go ahead and fill these these gouges up. I'm going to hit these with a wire wheel real quick just to make sure I get all the plasma slag out of there. That's one thing you want to make sure you do is get the plasma slag out because it can cause pinholes and porosity and stuff like that. So we're going to get this over on the table and get it all set up, get the welder set up. And we'll go ahead and get this all prepped up for fitting the flights. We got some we got some cosmetic work we gotta do first, so we'll go to that point. It's time for today's super cool tool. Alright guys, so for today's super cool tool, we're gonna be talking tank rollers. So this set right here. You've got a drive roller set and an idler set. And what this is, is typically if you're, if you're welding something like a tank or large bore pipe or something like that, you want a drive roller set. And I was able to pick this up from the same place I pick up all my used stuff, a website we use here in Utah. I was able to pick it up for quite a bit less than it is to go buy a brand new one. They haven't been used all that much. So let's take a closer look at the settings and what you are capable of doing on these. Okay, so if you look here, you've got a potentiometer that will adjust your speed. There's a pedal on the floor that runs the drive rollers. Okay, so then there's a direction switch, so I can change directions. Okay, so that's pretty nice. I can flip it to run, and it will just run continuously. Most of the time I use a pedal though. So, you got your power cord, just hooks to 110. And then you've got your remote, which is what the pedal's hooked to. I've done a lot of welding on a setup just like this, building all sorts of drive rollers, large, large drive rollers. Um, I might be able to find some pictures and be able to show you guys kind of some of the stuff that I've done on a drive roller system like this in the past. I've ran a set of these that was probably half this size on the wheel size clear up to a set that would take up half my shop. The reason that you want a drive roller set is because in the past you've seen where Bridger will come out here or McCoy will come out here and they'll help me spin the reamers so that I can weld the shaft and build the shaft up or situations similar to that. So with, with this sort of setup, you can put something cylindrical on here and then when you push the pedal it spins it for you you can adjust your speed right on so the, all you have to do is hold your stinger there and it will help you lay just a beautiful perfect circular bead these type of tools are probably more catered to large industrial type shops but with the work I'm doing it seems like I'm getting more and more into large industrial type jobs and so for me to pick this up for a few hundred dollars was well worth my investment. It'll make my work look better. It'll make the job easier for me. It'll be quicker for me. So if you look here, there's also some adjustment holes. You can pull these pins out and you can run these up and that will bring the wheels closer together. I do want to try to keep the heat as far as I can from these because there is a coating like a rubber plastic coating on these wheels and I don't want to melt them. In a perfect ideal situation I would actually be using a weld positioner for these reamers but 
at the moment I don't have $7,500 in my back pocket. So we're gonna use this because it's what I have and I think it's gonna work just fine. So I'm excited to use it. This will be the first time I'll be able to use it since I've had it. And we're gonna get the reamer shaft over here. We're gonna fill up those voids and try to get it all ready so that we can start fitting the flights and I doubt we're gonna make it to weld the flights up tonight but I am hoping I can get them all fit up because if I can get them fit up then tomorrow night I'll come out here I'll preheat it and I'll go right to welding and hopefully be able to finish it up and then all that's left to do is hard face it and then it's done hopefully I can finish it up tomorrow so that's where we're at that's our drive roller system if you guys have any other questions about this or any other tool that you've seen on our channel on the super cool tool segment if you guys have any questions drop a comment below and we'll try to get them answered so going on guys we're back out in the shop tonight I'm gonna show you guys what we got done yesterday we didn't get quite as far as we wanted to we got the shaft all repaired all the low spots repaired so the next step is it dips down right here and then it kind of goes back up right here so about from here to about right here I would like to build that back up pretty worn down so I'm gonna repair that we've got to heat this up with the torch for a minute get it warmed up so that we just don't go to welding and get some quench cracking so we're gonna preheat it and then we'll uh, see if we can't start fitting flights it's a little more chilly out here tonight than it was last night we got the heater going we'll get the torch dragged over here I'm gonna hit this with a wire wheel we'll see if we can't start welding on that bad boy Okay, so I'm just gonna give you guys a little peek at what I got going here. I've taken a piece of scrap right here that I had laying over there that was pretty close to the right height to rest my arm on. I've tacked it to the table, so I'm just setting my arms up here so I don't have to hold them the whole time. And then I'll start the weld, and then I burn a, a full circular weld all the way around, and it gives me a nice pretty pass. So I'll just give you guys a look. I like to stagger my starts and stops so they're not all in a row. So usually I'll go about a quarter turn and then start and then on the next one quarter turn and then start. All right, so you can see there, you wanna make sure you fill your starts and stops right there, try to keep them as consistent as possible. But if I 
give you guys a look there as it goes around. It keeps it pretty dang straight, which is nice because then when you stop, you get a nice consistent straight line. So that's just one of the beauties of having a setup like this. Now one of the things that I am nervous about is these wheels getting too hot. But as long as I keep them moving, I think they're okay because they're doing they're doing pretty well right now. This is pretty warm right here, but as long as I keep these moving, I, I don't think we'll have to worry about them melting. So I'm gonna take this probably to about here. That's the, where the majority of the damage was. So once I get done taking the weld to here, then I'm just gonna clean it up with a wire wheel. I'll make sure that our lube ports here are clear and that they look nice. Then it'll be time to start fitting flights. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so there's our shank repair done. That's where having the right equipment makes a difference. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with that. So now it's time to move over to start fitting the flights. So I'm gonna get those over here and I'm gonna pull a measurement and I'm gonna divide it evenly because we got three rows of flights. So, and then that's where we'll fit them up on the shaft, so. Let's go to that point. Okay, I can also take a pipe wrap, wrap it around here, trace it, but this is gonna be fine for what we're doing. I'm going to check it with a square. It's kind of tricky to check. We want it exactly 180 degrees on the other side. And we want it lined up exactly the same distance off the end of the shaft as well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take my pipe wrap, I'm going to mark it here. That should give me an exact mark on where I need to be. Hot. So now, if I put that on there, get my mark exactly the same on that line and square it off the shaft that should be right where I want it. So I'm going to throw this level this is kind of hanky jank but I have to get it as close to level as possible which is not easy
nice quick update. These are all welded out. Triple passed everything. Uh, some of it was actually more than triple passed. If it looked on the lean side, I gave it another pass. Pretty happy with how everything has turned out so far. So now that those are welded out, all that's left to do is hard face. I've got to throw the hard facing wire into the welder, switch the gas, and then I'm going to hard face it. Try to protect the areas that are that are the most susceptible to wear. This this right here is hard facing, so they've already got a little bit on there. It's nothing to write home about, but we'll we'll definitely add to that. We'll make sure we'll make sure and hit these corners, and then I should wrap it up. So I've got about 10 minutes until I'm supposed to have the door shut on the shop and lights off so I don't want the cops getting called on me so I gotta hurry up and do this and then get out of here and get in the house so let's hurry and do it All right guys, hard facing is done. You can see I added some on these teeth. I've got some on the back and the front of every one of these flights. I hard faced around every port, every lube port. Hard faced on the shank to try to avoid what happened here where we had to fix it. So that's that's about it for for the work on this one. So now I've just I'm gonna go through and do some cleanup, throw a wire wheel on. I like to go through and knock all the berries and spatter off that I can, try to make it look nice for the customer. Even though the first thing they're gonna do is drive it right in the dirt. So I, I just want it to look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up, get it all ready for the customer to come pick it up and We'll go from there. What's going on guys? We're back out here tonight. Moving on to the next reamer. So, a couple of things on this one. You can see this shackle here has been welded on they want that one cut off this one's seized up so they want me to either cut it off or pull it off or whatever i can do there you can see there's a lot of wear that's going on here so i gotta build this back up and then i'm gonna add another two teeth on here i gotta scarf what's left of the teeth off and then replace it with some new teeth this first this first flight looks pretty good it's that's actually fairly new so these ones are good there is a little bit of wear here but it's mainly just repairing these flights here and then once I do that go ahead and hard face the whole thing and that's gonna wrap it up for that one so let's see what we can get done all right so the plan for this one I'm gonna go ahead and scarf off what's left of these teeth get this surface all prepped up and then we'll actually start working on building these up We've got a lot of weld to lay in there try to build this up I thought about maybe piecing something in there but it's gonna be hard to get it just right to where it needs to be so I think if we just build that up I mean it's gonna be half inch closer to an inch on the corner and then inch inch and a half around here so we'll just see what we can do there so anyway let's uh let's scarf these old teeth off and then we'll hit hit this with a grinder get it all prepped up and start building that area up
Okay, so I got these all scarfed off. So you can see where we got to build up here. So they're all cleaned up. I think the first thing I want to do is build them up first. This flat spot right here is the factory edge. As I was scarfing that off, you could tell where the factory edge was. So that's, that's factory right there. So I'm gonna be able to build up all this and I'll have a baseline to know how far I need to build it up to. So that's the plan. So I think I am gonna squirt this with some WD-40 real quick and see if I can get it to bust loose. Might even try heating it up a little bit and then I'll start building up these. Let's go to that point. Break out the big guns. Alright, so we got a reamer over here on the table. With the sharp angle that's on this, it makes it really hard to weld it when it's tipped horizontal. It's one more reason it'd be nice to have a weld positioner, but for now, we're going to just position it the way we need to with the crane. And I'll just get up on the table, build up this section, roll it, tip it up, build up this section. That's just how it's going to have to be to be able to get it built up the way that I want to. So that's where we're at. That's what we're going to work on right now. going on guys it's the following night uh, I'm gonna give you guys an update real quick and then I would like to talk about something that unfortunately is one of those things you deal with when you are in business for yourself so let's let's go over how far we got last night I was able to get the flights all repaired and built up I can roll these around so we're talking hours and hours of build up there in repairing those but that should give those a lot more life okay so that's where we got on this one I wasn't able to weld the teeth on I was planning on doing that tonight I was gonna get the teeth tacked on weld it out and then I was gonna hard face the whole thing but so one of the things that I would like to talk about, this is one of those things that 
is unfortunately a little bit tough about being in business for yourself. People can either be really pleasant to deal with or they can be a nightmare to deal with. Unfortunately, even people in this line of work can still be a nightmare to deal with. I'll just give you guys a little bit of the information on what happened. So I got the first reamer done. These three reamers are all for the same customer. I got the first reamer done. Customer wanted it by Monday. He had it by Monday. We got that one shipped out. The company that I do the work for on these, they are a drilling supply company. People that are in that line of work will come to them and say, hey, we've got this reamer, we need rebuilt. Great, we've got a guy. So then they come to me and they say, I got three more reamers that need rebuilt. Great, I take the reamers, I strip them down, I rebuild them, I hard face them, clean them up, and then they're back up and running. Well, this particular customer wanted these three reamers rebuilt <clears throat> and when I say rebuilt, in a lot of ways, like the third reamer over there should probably just be scrapped. I'm fine with them paying me to rebuild it, but in reality, it's hammered. It's toast. It needs a complete rebuild. But a lot of these guys, it's their livelihood. I get it. And so they want to just repair it just enough to get it up and running again so that they can continue to make money off of it and spend as little money as possible. I understand. So basically that's what happened. The first reamer went out the door. I sent the invoice. The customer didn't like the price. So then my contact with the drilling company sends me a text said, hey, the, the customer is unhappy with the price. Don't do any more work on those reamers. Okay, so I call him up. Hey, is there a problem? Well, he's unhappy with the price. So we talked back and forth about it, about what the customer had said. Apparently the customer was extremely hard to work with from the beginning, even through till now. So basically what's happening now is I've been told don't do any more work on these. We're gonna stop right now. He'll pay you for what you've done, but he doesn't wanna spend any more money. He claims he's got a guy from the state that he's from that can do it for less than half the price. So here's the other good thing about working for people like the drilling company that I work for. They know the type of work that I'm capable of. They know the type of work that I produce and they've got my back. So he tells the customer, fine, if you think you can take that reamer and go get it rebuilt by some other company for less than half the price, by all means, go do it. But you're gonna get exactly what you pay for. This is coming from a guy who's been in the business a long time. He knows the drilling world, he knows reamers, and you know, in a way that was flattering for me to hear, but as someone who likes to stand by their work, it sucks when you've got a customer who feels like they're getting taken advantage of. And honestly, it happens all the time. People just don't want to pay what the going rate is. And <clears throat> to have a professional welder weld something, you're going to pay. And a lot of people just don't want to pay a professional welder rate. Which is fine, because there are other people out there who can do a fraction of the quality for a fraction of the price. And that's okay. But what I will say about this is it's one of those things that's been very frustrating for me to learn as a business owner because I take it personal. I'm the type of person that is extremely picky and anal about my work and I want it to go out the door with the customer being pleased with what they have paid for and then the customer gets something out of it and I get something out of it. And when you have a customer that's extremely tough to deal with, sometimes, you know, it sucks. But to be honest, you're going to run into those people everywhere you go, in any line of work. So I guess what I'm saying is I didn't mean to go on a whole rant. It's a welding channel. It's not a, it's not a let's BS about 
all of my life's woes. I'm just saying, I feel like this is related. I feel like there's a lot of people that watch the channel that look at, look at what this is and say, you know what? Even the little man can make it in, in this line of work. And I believe you can. But I'm just trying to be real about what it's like. You, you know, the good always comes with the bad. And unfortunately, sometimes you deal with stuff like this. So as hard as it is for me to put these back on the pallet, and chances are one of two things is either going to happen. He'll either tell me that the customers changed their mind, he wants me to finish them, or he'll come pick them up, take them back to the customer, and the customer will go to option B. It's hard for me because then I feel like somebody else feels like they've been taken advantage of. And that's not me. So it's just one of those things that sucks to deal with as a business owner. Some people are great to deal with. Some people are not great to deal with. And so that's one of the things that you as a business owner have to learn how, how to handle. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there and add that. It's the way it goes when you're in this line of business. So anyway, we've got these all cleaned up as best as they're going to be, unless I hear otherwise. So we're going to get this one back on the pallet. I do have one small reamer over here we're going to finish up that has three teeth that need welded on it. We'll get that one done. That actually goes to the same customer. So we'll go ahead and load this up, get it out of here, and we'll continue working on this last one. We'll go from there. All right, so here's what we got now. So this is the last piece to this cluster. And I just talked to my contact with the drilling company. He said he's taking them back, load them on the pallet. I'll come get it all tomorrow. We'll pay you for what you've done. And he's just going to have to figure it out. So he does want this finished. So I've got these three teeth here that need to be welded on. So the teeth get welded on here like so. But I've got to divide this into three equal segments and get the teeth divided equally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pipe wrap, wrap it around this. I'll put a line, the whole circumference around it. And then I'm going to take a measurement where the line is. And then I'll divide that by my three spaces. So we're going to go to that point, see how far we can get. Okay, so we got our mark on there now. Now I need to take a measurement of the circumference of that mark. So one reason it's nice to have a bunch of different types of layout tools and squares, uh, measurement tools, tape like this is a lot easier to measure anything round than just your regular tape because it's dished and then you gotta fight it and it snaps back and all that stuff. If you have a a tape like this, you know, typically a 50 footer, a 100 footer, something with a cloth tape, or this is steel, something that you can wrap around it will definitely help you. And then usually what I like to do on something like this is I'll burn a foot. And when I say burn a foot, I mean you start at the one foot mark. So I'll start at the one foot mark. So we're exactly six inches there. So that should be two inches. So if we lay it out every two inches. Okay. So it was exactly six inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. We got our three segments there. We'll go ahead and get these tacked on and we should be good. If you've never seen the teeth that go on these, this is what the teeth look like. They got a little carbide point on the end that's brazed on and then you just weld those on. There's all different sizes, there's all different kinds. So we're ready to weld these up. We're going to triple pass them and then we'll give you guys a look.
Okay guys, we'll give you a look here. Got that all done. Triple passed all those teeth. So that's gonna that's gonna knock that one out. I'm told that what this is for is they attach it and when they pull back the reamer, this runs backwards as they pull it out and it obviously cuts as they pull it out and that helps them pull it out. Anyway, that's what I'm told. I'm still learning a lot of this reamer drilling stuff. Anyway, that's gonna finish that one up. So we're gonna get it thrown on the pallet. We'll get this one put on the pallet, ship them back to the customer. That's life. Not every customer is gonna be fun to deal with. That's one of the things that uh, the sooner you learn when you're in business for yourself, the sooner you can sleep at night. It sucks, but it's just the way it is. Some people are okay sacrificing craftsmanship and quality of work for money. Some people, that's the route they wanna go, and that's okay. That's, uh, that's gonna wrap this one up. Appreciate you guys watching. One thing I did wanna say, I checked my phone about 15 minutes ago and just happened to look at the channel. We hit 500 subscribers, so just want to tell you guys, really appreciate you guys watching. It means a lot, and if you like what you see, like, subscribe, and share, and see you on the next one. And then that's where we'll... That's where we're... Huh. This is a brand new tape. I just... I just bought this tape. There we go. I was about to swear there. This is freaking jacked up. How is this working?